and welcome to the 72 pin connector podcast featuring a messed up cam that is now fixed eric is back hey what the how's it what going? this is how's it going everybody with us this week we have a special guest we have acro hello what's going on fellers what's up dude if you're in our community you obviously know acro he's always chilling in the discord and hanging out so we thought we'd have him on a podcast yeah yeah happy to be here gonna be a good one we also have eric on the cast as normal he's still in ohio but he's not at my place again fortunately yeah and we've realized that my setup's a little different this week than last week and that kind of hurts yeah i have to say i your camera and your mic sounds better than i expected it would given your well the camera's actually the same one i rock in washington thanks tom oh that's right yeah. yep i got you but the uh can the uh mic is actually a uh, samsung earbuds default mic <laughs> that's it's not bad it's really not bad it's that surprisingly good i'm actually pretty happy with it and we have tom i'm here tom's here i'm tom's here. always here but uh there there is something terrifying suddenly what? pasta salad wow whoa suddenly Oh my but, god, okay. all of a sudden. This this brand name, I honestly don't know if this is a threat or not, but it's quite literally suddenly pasta salad. Like yep. you turn a corner, you're sneaking around, you're Leon S. Kennedy, you're you're deep into the heart of the Raccoon City Police Department. You turn a corner and suddenly <sighs> pasta salad. It's a little too sudden there, dude. Agreed. I don't know if I can handle yeah, my salad I, that's that a, fast. That's a, that's a very odd name, especially <laughs> for pasta salad. Yeah. Like, like it sounds like an instant, suddenly instant coffee would make sense or some instant potatoes or something. Yeah. It's, it's literally like it's a powder scare mix. You just as you open it. It's like, ah, fuck, pasta salad. You open it out with pasta salad. It's like those snakes in a jar when you open yes. them up. <laughs> All over the no kitchen floor. No pocket sand. <laughs> pasta salad. Pasta salad. Pocket, pocket sand is one of my favorite things that has existed in any creative universe. Agreed. Only thing better it's is so po good. Uh, Pocket Tom. Pocket Tom. Yes. Although yeah. I am going to have to say, Pocket Sand to me is only beaten out by one other thing, which is look at this graph. <laughs> graph. Look at this graph is look my at favorite this thing. Graph. I don't know. Pocket Sand's pretty fucking good. Wait, where and did it's um... such a tiny, minuscule thing in the show? <laughs> yeah. But it just completely encapsulates Dale's character. Absolutely. It's like. If you're introducing somebody to King of the Hill and you have to tell them about Dale, you show them that clip, and that's basically it. Yep. So pocket where, sand. Oh, I meant to sorry. ask where where did the uh, pocket Tom come from? I, don't I think I was I, there when that was coined. I want to blame Bird. It was in one of the in-house nights when we're just screwing around in in-house. Yeah. And I I would just like I would flail and just absolutely suck ass at rocket league for like four out of the five minutes but for like two or three moments during that game i just went off like saving something or scoring something or making an incredible pass and i'm just bad so nobody expected it so that's kind of where the pocket tom came from <laughs> okay i like it it's good you always count on pocket tom you always have that at the ready someone's got a pocket tom <laughs> See, and I've only actually heard of that in a gaming term for pocket medic and TF2. That's about the only time I've actually heard that term. Oh, mm. okay. Fair enough. But so how's, yeah. your, how's your guys' week been? How's everything going? Not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Just Heck. working from home. <laughs> Nothing exciting. Working from home is nice. I really dig it. I wish I could work from home. You then again, I'm home a lot. <laughs> Don't let your dreams be dreams. Don't let your dreams be dreams. You too can work from home. <laughs> that sounds like a cheesy like uh, Adult Swim commercial. <laughs> you too can make absolutely insane cartoons that make no sense. I mean, they're they just are a fan of the throw shit at the wall type of programming because yeah. they have far more shows that were awful than good but the ones that are good are fucking great and the there are certain shows that 
you think are awful until you get like four or five episodes in and then you can't help but love it. And I'm specifically referring to Squidbillies here. It is literally oh. the worst show they have ever produced in the history of ever, but I love it so goddamn much. I hated the first couple of episodes of Squidbillies when I saw them for the first time. Right? Can't and say I've ever that, seen Squidbilly. On it's that not aspect, good. Aqua Teen Hunger Force was the same way. The first time I saw that show, mm -hmm. I was just like, what? People yeah. enjoy this? What is this? This doesn't make any sense. I love that show, man. That I do is like too. one of my all-time go-tos. <laughs> like if I'm so just good. laying in bed, once watch something to go to sleep, it's like, yeah, some Aqua Teen sounds pretty good. You see, I couldn't ever watch Aqua Team when trying to sleep. This seems like a very sleep-laden show. Well, I mean, I've uh, just seen them all. I think it. So like, the whole thing doesn't make sense enough that you don't have to, like, try to follow any kind of coherent narrative. So Gina doesn't like the show. Well, she doesn't know she likes it yet. I should word it that way. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I... Uh, but had it on one night, and it was the episode with like the dummies where all they could say is kill oh, and die back yep. and forth. And that uh, is not a good one to actually try to sleep to. No, yeah. it's not. Kill, 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 die, die, die. Like the entire episode. It is the most obnoxious episode of any show I've ever watched. Um so I've got I've got a new food to talk about, or rather a new drink. That uh, isn't suddenly pasta salad. Whoa. By the way, that's going to keep happening. Um, <laughs> I picked up Basil Hayden Dark Rye. Ooh. Now, this is a like straight up Kentucky rye whiskey, but blended uh, with port wine. And so it's got this beautiful, like dark reddish coloring to it. It is, it is fucking delicious. Hmm. Like this stuff. Oh my god. I I could drink this like a goddamn soda, which is very dangerous. It is extremely dangerous. Um, but it is fucking great. It's uh like I've got a short list of whiskeys that are perfect, just straight. Don't add anything, don't change anything, don't add water, do nothing to it. This is one of them. I absolutely love basil. 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 Uh, v Dobby in the chat. Person. V. Dobby in the chat is berating, berating you for pronouncing it that way. Okay, Angel's Envy is fucking great, too. That's also on my list. What, is it Basil Hayden? Or is it Basil Hayden? Basil, Basil. Hayden. Tomato, um, tomato. I'm just as shit during it. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's fucking great. It's delicious. I love it. Uh, whiskey. It's good whiskey. I don't know if I have... Jameson's about the only one I ever actually will sip straight, but I still have it on rocks. Yeah, I, I've i got to... Uh, when everything... When the world stops being on fire, um, I'll have you over and, and we, can, we can drink some whiskey. Yeah. Have some sipping whiskeys. Because I got some Angel's Envy over here. I need to get some Whistle Pig, but it's a little expensive. That's Whistle the other pig. thing I was going to say about this. Whistle yeah. Pig? Yeah. What the fuck is of a really name is fucking good. It is really <laughs> fucking good, but it's like 110 bucks a bottle. So oh, that I, name. I buy it like once a year around Christmas time, and that's um but uh this the Basel Harden is uh like 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's an excellent, excellent whiskey. It's not gonna break the bank. Uh, yeah, no, Dobby, I, I understand that a hundred bucks is nothing in the land of whiskeys. I was browsing some scotches. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, it's really cheap. It's on sale for about uh, 3500 a bottle. Uh, <laughs> nah, nah, dude, no. I'm good. <laughs> Are any of them actually 3500 a bottle? There's yes. No way. Oh, yeah, easily. I mean, that's actually like, like a collector's thing, maybe. I paid that much for my truck. I don't think yeah. that would be mid-tier. <laughs> Are you serious? So, yeah. so I'm talking like the average human on what the average human would spend on whiskey, not like what collectors or people who are super into expensive, like 50 year old scotches would spend. Um, so yeah, 50 bucks, great price point for a great whiskey. 100 bucks, yeah, you're gonna push it for a lot of people. So Dobby's got an 800 bottle and uh, a few 250s. I think my most expensive here is a 150 and it's a Macallan something. It's one of their higher end Macallan, but. That is literally there 
to be drunk when I get like promotions at work or or something. Or like when the year 2020 is over, I'll probably drink it in a night. <laughs> yeah, the reason to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it is quite literally celebration whiskey. I don't have any of that. I don't have a celebration whiskey. I don't have a celebration beer, but I just don't celebrate. <laughs> you know, I'm a sad know. individual. I'm realizing this now. My life's deprived of joy. <laughs> <laughs> I could have told you that. The only expensive thing I have is a bottle of tequila I got down when I was in Mexico last year. Oh. It's called Don Julio. It's oh, the yeah. smoothest tequila. Like sipping tequila. You wouldn't think that that would be a thing, but it is delicious. Hmm. Don is so, fantastic. I've had it once. I can't stand tequila. Gina likes it. Tom likes it. Every once in a while, we go to a place called Agave around us. That's a tequila bar. And they get tequila flights of really nice tequila. Yeah. Oh, now hmm. I want tequila. Man, We've had when I come down there, we're like going. A bourbon. It was weird. It was yeah. barely as all get out and... We we had some weird tequilas that night. None of uh, them were good. No, <laughs> the, our, good. the flight we got was bad. It was just bad. Which is really unfortunate, because you get a flight and you think, okay, I'll probably love one of these. Nah, they're all bad. You see, to me, like that's typically what I expect walking into any tequila. But huh. I've only had tequila so, yeah. like once or I, like two or three times, and every time it just tasted like dirt water to me. Yeah, yeah. I would highly suggest how I feel. going out, training yourself, pick up one of these. They're not super expensive. If you like whiskey, if you don't like whiskey, this isn't going to change your mind. But if you've never had a sipping whiskey and something that you would just, you know, quite literally not add a damn thing to, that's probably a really good place to start. So when you say not add a thing, does that include rocks? Yeah, yeah. So uh, these are <laughs> whiskey steels. So I quite literally throw these in the freezer. Uh, and they are straight up stainless steel. Keep the whiskey cold. No dilute. Not like cold. not like cold, cold, but like you know, cool. You did talk about this yeah. briefly in the last cast, but they hadn't arrived. I think they arrived on your doorstep during the cast yeah. or something, or right yeah, before. Yeah, along with the other prop you're supposed to show this week. I want to see oh, yeah. those fucking tumblers. Oh yeah, yeah. So here's um, here's the fancy glass. So it's hmm. very very geometric. It's nice. That is uh, nice. Got the steels inside. Um, now, the other cups uh, were shipped through USPS, uh, which means they weren't shipped at all because <laughs> the United States Postal Service around me doesn't do their goddamn job. And they're literally going to sit there until they go back to the sender. I am putting in another order online in the hopes that they don't use USPS to ship it because it's just going to get returned to sender. I'm not going to order something online just to go to a brick and mortar retail establishment to pick up the goddamn thing. I order online because I'm lazy. <laughs> hey, lazy to own it is all that matters. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think I've had one instance in the last three years where I've had to go to pick up something. Yeah, like, it really, really depends on your particular post office. The people around me, they don't even put the packages in the goddamn trucks. They literally don't. They only carry the fucking we missed you slips. That's the only thing they carry in that. It's like, no, we missed you. Here you go. Do you even try? Nope. Nope. Oversized. And I, I literally, like, I have, I have three years of recorded complaints with the United States Post Office and the Postmaster General for this area on this problem. We have package lockers down the street that are for packages. It's really amazing. <laughs> they don't like use them. They refuse to use them. Uh, I don't know why. No idea why. They they even said no, we'll use them. And we got to the point of us like opening an email case and me sending them photographs of what they were doing, what they needed to do, and then the GPS locations of where they need to drop these things <laughs> off. Uh -huh. Yep. It changed for about two weeks and then it stopped. Nice. Well, because you know, it's easier not to. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And like so, <laughs> so now I get a lot of these emails from online retailers saying, hey, we had a return to sender. We're going to go ahead and refund you because we're not sure what happened here. I'm like, no, nah, it's cool. Whatever. We see you already <laughs> reordered this. Is that is that on purpose? Yep. Don't worry. I got it. Fuck the United States Postal Service. <laughs> and I got to say, that is one of the most unrewarding ways to end in overtime. Sorry, Acro. <laughs> that was great. What do you mean? I worked so hard for this. <laughs> 
Easy. Oh, and yeah, and I feel I need to call out. I was calling out in chat that it's weird to see me without a hat. My hat broke. I have oh, a little metal piece broke? here, and it's gone. So I now have to safety pin this thing together. It's oh. a flimsy little thing that sits on my head until I get it fixed. Also, got my, some duct tape. My camera's kind of dark. I should have fixed that. I'll Easily that. something duct tape will fix there, Eric. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, what's new? Some games? Anyone games? games? Oh, we, we, I have played a lot of games, and I know Adam and I have played one game in particular. Oh, man. Uh, it play... is pretty. It's nice. It's called Control from Remedy Games. Um, I didn't know who Remedy Games was before that because I'm bad about knowing what developers played or made which games and, and everything. But it's the people that made the Max Payne series. And I loved the Max Payne series. Um, but Control is a third person act, supernatural action, I guess, adventure thing with a very strange story that involves weird alternate dimensions and this this government agency that's in charge of trying to keep track of them and control over them and i don't know but it's cool it's a really cool game um it's yeah i'm not getting like anything that's super unique or original about it it is if you liked the combat in max Payne and you just wanted more of that more of that third person diving around you know super fast action uh yeah you're gonna get that here um I don't think it's anything like incredibly unique, uh, but the setting is nice. Uh, it controls well. The action is fun. Um, yeah, it's just, it's solid. It is a solid game. Um, you I said it's pretty? Oh, it's oh goddamn God. beautiful. It has like all of the RTX things. Yeah. Oh. So that is literally the only thing that's making this game fucking beautiful. Otherwise, it's fairly uninspired. In, in most other aspects, like the character models, not great. Definitely character not great. The animations, amazing. yeah, the animations, animations are fine. They're fine. Um, but the, uh, I think the actual environment and level design is good. Like, a apart from just looking good because of the lighting and stuff, I think it's designed mm. pretty well. Is this the one you were putting um, pictures of in the Discord, yeah. Adam? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's the one. And the sound design, honestly, is just as good as the visuals, I think. I do really like the sound the is design. fantastic, but I think the, the key part of the game that differentiates it, like you said, from like a normal third person shooter is the fact that you get, um, I want to say, I don't want to just say telekinesis abilities because there are other ones, but you do get some like superpower type things. Um, if you remember on PS2, there was a game called PsyOps, mm -hmm. which was kind of similar. Honestly, it was a third person shooter and your dude had a bunch of like, um, like telekinesis and I think you had like you could make fire and something else yeah like, I don't remember exactly what all amazing but most people only remember it for the the, the damn demo disc yeah. that came in PlayStation Magazine because that's how everyone found out about it exactly. god I miss demo discs I miss those <sighs> me too I wish that somebody would come up with like just demo packs online like here's five demos packaged up in a zip file double click to run Go have fun. That would be just fantastic. It would be, yeah, that would be nice. I have a dog wanting in this room very bad right now. I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that. It's all right. So, um, yeah, the RTX stuff, fucking beautiful. My, my only, and it's such a nitpicky gripe. A lot of the level design seems purpose built to serve the graphical fidelity to serve showing off the features of the RTX stuff they were doing Kinda. and not necessarily because it was a great idea to do. Well, like, I mean, I be... think it makes sense. You've got this giant mm -hmm. like government building that's in charge of controlling and maintaining stuff from another dimension. And there's a lot of like marble and polished wood walls and tiled floors that reflect really nicely and all kinds of stuff. Um, it makes sense, but, like, but not you can definitely that. tell that they're looking to show it off. Yeah, like um, the there was a segment where it's literally just an extremely long hallway that goes to basically nowhere and wraps back around on itself. Like if you were if you were building a level to build a level, that would be one of those things that you would take out because it's kind of boring unless it's visually appealing. 
-hmm. the only reason they have it in there is because, yes, it shows off all the RTX stuff and it's pretty as fuck. Now, that's okay. There are lots of games that build levels just to show off the cool graphics tag. I mean, mm -hmm. that was literally all of Splinter Cell. It just well, happened to be a really great game. There's an entire engine that's only to make shit look pretty. Cryogen. Yeah. 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 But it's not just to like show off the graphics like having a part like that just because it looks cool um even graphics aside like design wise like there's nothing wrong with having a part that's maybe a little drawn out specifically just because it looks good yeah. or it looks cool and downtime is absolutely a thing you need in in pacing good games mm -hmm. um so they they do get away with a lot of this stuff in the lore because the uh, the game takes place in a haunted house, but not like a typical haunted house that, oh, it's haunted because there are there are monsters here or there are ghosts. Literally, the house itself is the evil entity. It's like the town of Silent Hill being the evil thing. This house is the evil, uncontrollable thing. So they will they like pepper lore all throughout the game and even mm -hmm. even certain gameplay segments where the house will shift and change and the layout will be different because it just wants to be. Um, so there's a lot of this, like, almost deus ex machina, you know, sort of, yeah, we're, we're going to make this plot point because we can, and not necessarily because it makes sense, because it's, oh, look, spooky house. But because of the setting that they put this game in, they can get away with it. It works really well in the story. Yeah, and I like the way they present the story, because it's, mm -hmm. it's weird in a good way. But it's not it's really overly weird. confusing. Like, there's always things you can... There are a lot of pickups to read or listen to or, like, little in-game videos you can watch. Um, but it's, like, it's a cool brand of weird, but not necessarily convoluted and confusing. Sorry, had to get up. That dog was not stopping until <laughs> I opened that door. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a weird, weird setting. So, um... If any of you are familiar with SCP, Secure, Contain, and Protect, it's quite literally just, it's, it's hard to explain. It's quite literally just like a giant pile of creepypasta that exists in the same like mental universe that just people have created. Like there's a fridge that if you aren't looking at it, it will change into something else entirely and murder you. Um, there's, you know, a, uh, a slide projector that opens up doors to other realities. Like, like all the kind of, like, x file twin mm -hmm. peaky sort of things aren't exactly what they seem, and ordinary objects are actually, like, these weird items of power that have these weird, like, I, I guess, metaphysical links into different realities. Mm -hmm. um, so that's exactly what this government agency is trying to control. Which is weird because by definition, these things and the place they're occupying, the building, the oldest house, is uncontrollable. So it does feel like, you know, a lot of humanity's hubris trying to control the uncontrollable and uh, everything that goes along with that. So it's really entertaining. Mm -hmm. You just went big it's, words I'm, on me there. The <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm really, really loving the game so far, though. Like, it's, it's really, it's just, it's that perfect blend of sci-fi and weird that i like with the gameplay that's actually pretty fun and engaging and i like the the special abilities like there's the telekinesis is incredibly satisfying because you yes, can grab is. there are so many objects you can grab in this game and the way they did the physics um like whole rooms are destructible it's crazy mm -hmm. um but there's it always something great. to grab and even if you run out of things to grab you can yes. literally pull off a chunk of the wall or the floor so that what? Like from a gameplay perspective, yeah. you're never running out of things that you can grab and throw at people with your mind. I was Super freaked cool. out because there there were enemies and like I had basically thrown everything I could at them because I'm really bad. Uh -huh. um, I'm like, oh shit, I ran out of stuff. I got to throw stuff like my gun's not doing very much. So I press the key just out of desperation and my character just goes chunk of concrete. Blam. And it was fucking great. It was mm -hmm. amazing. Is it co-op? Cool. Two-player co-op? No, no, it's just it a single strictly player. single player. Uh, you guys were the... both just playing it. Yeah. <laughs> but just I the... don't remember the last time I played a single-player game. It's been a while. Yeah. I, I'm typically like that as well. I tend to do my gaming more socially. 
Depends on like what kind of mood I'm in. Once in a while. But yeah, if just I'm feeling the, uh... particularly introverted, I'll I'll play a single. Yeah. The only one I think I've actually played a lot of recent, oh, I guess outside of Animal Crossing, that's a different bear. But um, Slay the Spire, which I actually played a little bit of this week. Finally got the nice. Switch caught up to my PC runs. Which is nice, since they don't have cross-save. Oh, that sucks. Is yeah, that something they're planning on implementing? Hate. or? No, that, that's, no. that's not going to happen. So I just figured, screw it, just got to grind it out, get back to where I was. Fair enough. Which is fine. It plays better on the Switch, I feel, than PC anyway. Really? It's 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 really good. I mean, pacing wise, it fits the Switch so well. Mm. Like it I like the mobile game sort of ethos. I, I play the floor. I hit the power button. Next night, I play the next floor. Hit the power button. It just fits it very well. It's a chill game too. But yeah. Um, however, there is one game I want to hear about. Acro has been playing it. Yes. What the fuck's going on with Minecraft Dungeons? Man, it's like right up my alley for a easygoing ARPG. It's basically, I would describe it kind of like a uh, a Vermintide type of, type of playing game in terms of like gearing and uh, progression. Ooh, okay, and then so... gameplay-wise, it kind of... Or, sorry... I was actually thinking my other uh, my other game, um, <laughs> just too focused on the game. Um, no, Minecraft Dungeons. It's a super simple uh, ARPG, bare, pretty bare bones in terms of like how ARPGs typically do their gearing and stuff. It won't be like Poe where you can have this massive skill tree that you have to invest a hundred hours just to understanding what the skill tree <laughs> is. Yeah, but. Gameplay wise, it's tons of fun. You run around killing your mobs, and it's actually built really well for the controller. I find it plays uh, better personally on the controller than uh, typical ARPGs. Oh, well, this um, is also a console release, right? Yeah, yeah, console release and uh, Windows Store, I guess. So it's tons of fun, and then, uh, but you're not gonna get like a thousand hours out of it i don't think with how it just came out okay and um slugger calls out it is on game pass which is i it think a is? Pretty great thing. oh shit i was gonna buy it oh fuck yeah nah man if you have game pass you get it okay oh, i gotta say okay. game pass keeps so i already have it super, <laughs> super <laughs> apparently i already great, have this game super fucking great deal don't you love that adam <laughs> yeah and it's awesome. too you can get your buddies caught up to you really quick with how they do the gearing. Mm. It's more of a... If you're playing with your buddies, you're going to get gear at their, closer to their level than you will yours, power Ooh. level wise. Down does, or up? Does, uh... Up. Okay. So higher than, higher than what you'll get. So the gear you have makes a bigger difference in how well you can do more so exactly. than like the level of your character. Yeah, exactly. So instead of having to like grind a bunch of stuff out, you can just... Here's some sick gear you can keep up with us now which i guess in that sense it's kind of similar to vermintide i don't know how i feel about that because it's really nice but at the same time it's i think that can kill it for me sometimes i guess i'll have to play to see but like i like that grind that grind's really nice Little it was final. definitely fun the first day when i played with Sendril and uh Central and Chewy, I think, I was playing with. And Slugger. And we were grinding it out, started from scratch, and got our power level up to, like, level 30. And then a few of us started grinding on our own, and now I'm at power level 61. I think Central's over 100 already. And power level is, like, your gear score? Yeah, your average gear score. Okay. And okay. higher power level equals more health, more damage, more... Uh, is there anything on to your link to your player level, or is there even player level? Yeah, there is player level. Um, it doesn't really seem like it's very implemented at the moment with what player level is supposed to be doing. Okay. Um, so it's basically all power level, but I'm sure they'll adjust it at some point. 
Yeah, that was actually going to be my follow-up. Is is this early access? Is this labeled full release? No, this is... It's uh, full release. And then they've got DLC planned for July, actually. Oh, okay. All right. So keep in mind, this is still Mojang. So, yeah. you know, they can release the game, but they will be improving it for, like, 17 years. Did Even Minecraft ever treatment? have official DLC? Um... No, not not really. They've got Minecraft Realms, which is their paid multiplayer option. Um, but that's the only like that's like the closest thing. As far as like real DLC, no, not really. Okay, so this so, will be their first time really getting into that realm. Mm -hmm. So I have a question about video game genres that maybe all of you guys can answer as it pertains to this game. Akra, you mentioned ARPG a couple times. Um, what's RPG. the difference? Yeah. So, what's the difference, or is it just a subset of? Is dungeon crawler just a subset of action RPG? Would you say, or are these like fundamentally different games? I'm just trying to like imagine what the actual gameplay loop is and stuff. I mean, I, I... guess map layout they're the same or sim super similar at the least, but I'd still say they're different genres. I think it's, it's a subset. It's the because Dark Alliance is a dungeon crawler, but Dungeon Dark Alliance is absolutely an ARPG. Yeah. Yeah, I'd that say would... you can definitely have them as or both a game be both of them. Mm -hmm. Hack and slash, I, just I think, is a very big thing. Like they're very yeah. just push forward, kill lots of shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess my the... ARPGs end up being that too. They yeah. were the lifestyle wow. games before lifestyle games were a thing. Well, that's what I was saying about uh, ARPGs in general. I feel they're very hack and slashy, just kill lots of shit. Like, that's I don't like... know if I've played one that wasn't. Mm -hmm. I was just curious. Like, my only frame of reference with any of that is, like, Champions of Norath. It was, like, the only, Yeah, I guess, ARPG, if you want to call it that, that I ever played. Yeah, that's a good one though. That was a good one. Um, that came straight off of the developers of Dark Alliance, which I fucking love. That really pulled me into that world. Mm -hmm. We were playing that on uh, emulator a couple of weeks ago, you and I, Eric. Yeah, once I get back, I would like to get back to it. Yeah, man, that was fun. And thanks for jumping in, Fitz. You failed before I got a chance to say anything. <laughs> that was a really good time. I loved the fact that you and Dave were getting on there on those old games on Parsec. Mm -hmm. It was tons of fun. And then I've been loving watching Magic Dave and his uh, Mario speedruns. Jake kind of got him on that tangent. <laughs> yeah, Jake, man, I was watching him do some of, some of his Mario stuff when he was learning the game was hilarious. Like there was a clip we tweeted out of him where it was, holy shit, I'm the greatest. He's loving it. And then when he jumps to get the star, he long jumps right off the fucking map. That was a great clip. Like Love that it. was one of the funniest things I've seen submitted <laughs> in a long time. <laughs> and just his emotion swings are great on that. But yeah, that I've been enjoying seeing the community run through a lot of the older games, mm -hmm. especially the ones when they haven't played it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, watching always... Jake go through Ocarina of Time has been the best thing I have seen in months. <laughs> it's always it is, interesting it to magical. watch somebody play something that you're like pretty deeply familiar with for the first time and like seeing seeing their experience of learning it and like how they're figuring it out and and that i guess the how they're feeling about something brand new and when you're so used to being so familiar with it it's cool to see that like spark that you know that you felt the first time you played it mm. I, uh, I so so Ocarina of Time is literally that game for me. That is that is like the formative bedrock game of my entire gaming life. Um, is Ocarina of Time, yeah. and uh, and seeing someone go through that for the first time has been just amazing. I think it's also fun when it's an older game because game design standards have changed. Yeah, and watching someone play an old classic for the first time. Mm -hmm. When it's been 20 years? It's been a Which while. Which is weird to see for <laughs> Nintendo games because stuff hasn't changed that much for them. Maybe it's just mm -hmm. Nintendo being obsessed with their, their quality so things still feel pretty good even if they're old. But mm -hmm. like Ocarina of Time, the design honestly hasn't changed all that much from games like it. 
like your standard your bog standard action adventure title still plays a decent amount like the original oot okay ocarina of time yes some of the other zelda so as you get before yeah. that they start yeah. doing they had absolutely the old random yeah. bush in the middle of nowhere for no reason you have to chop yeah like the nes stuff did not age as well as as the other ones, for sure yeah ocarina of time's a goat type of game for a reason yeah even though yeah i won't go into it but yeah <laughs> i've been it's been really cool seeing the guys do those streams fucking bearded just sorry and that was totally <laughs> my, damn it, my beard itch acro scores i need to stop <laughs> acro's just dunking on us during the podcast while on the podcast yep. <laughs> no big deal you see our, our usual no excuse deal. was no we can't play that good because we're podcasting and then acro's over here like what what do you guys what? say i can't I can, but if you noticed earlier when we started talking about minecraft dungeons i started talking about uh <laughs> deep space galactic instead i was just <laughs> too focused on the game I yeah, thought the, that's where you whole, were getting now when you started. The yeah. whole game, the whole game, playing a game and trying to talk on a podcast is is a challenge for sure. Yeah, I don't mm. have the multitasking abilities for that. Nah. <laughs> okay, no, so speaking of right. Deep Rock, I saw you guys playing this, and I watched you stream it in Discord for a little bit. That game looks weirdly fun, and I am not into that style of game. Oh, it's tons of fun. Like I was talking about it earlier. Um, think vermintide crossed with uh risk of rain 2 it kind of feels okay. like risk of rain 2 when oh. you're playing but the gameplay loop is vermintide ish just a bunch of enemies get your objective done get out and drink a beer afterwards they've got a little bar that you can drink beers to get buffs on nice nice get gear get out go yeah, to the man. pint <laughs> go to the winchester kill phil <laughs> Grab Don't a pint and wait for it all to blow over. Gear and beer. I like it. Sounds, but um, in general, how are you thinking of it? Oh, it's great. I'll I'll keep putting hours into it. Looks like I've disconnected. Yeah. Um, yeah, me too. Oh, it's a server thing. I was worried my it's internet big. was crashing, which would have been bad okay. because I'm the one running the podcast this <laughs> time. <laughs> but no, no, it's great. I, uh, I. Yeah, I'll definitely put a lot more hours into it. I just got a character to prestige level, so you reset him back down to zero. You keep all your weapon upgrades, and now I get to do raids that I haven't tried yet. I'll need uh, Ty to get prestiged, and then we can start trying the raids that they've got. So when I initially saw the game, I thought that there was a... I thought there was something more than just that. I because I saw the mining aspect and I automatically went to RuneScape in my head, but like more of a crafting as well. Um crafting, I guess maybe a little bit, but it's more just weapon upgrades and Okay. Using the materials that you find for the said weapon upgrades. Yeah, I think it's it's cool still, but I was just really hoping for something more like um, open world. I'm not open world, like survival horror kind of things where my mind went. Yeah, no, it's not not so much survival. You do have to restart, kind of like Risk of Rain, where you, if you die, you lose the mission, got to retry it and whatnot. Um, but not like just running around a big planet or something Minecraft style. All right. Um, is that still on sale right now, or is that um, done sailed? Uh, I don't know that it's on sale, but it was fully released a couple weeks ago, which is when Ty and I picked it up, okay. and Magic Dave. But definitely tons of fun to ha to be had, and uh, I'd I'd highly recommend it. I'll play with you guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, wow, man, I just blanked some fierce. Um, I know, uh, damn, huge direction. There we go. Yeah. That's what I was trying to get. He has it. He's been trying to get some more Mr. people. Into Mr. It. Hugh, by the Sorry, way, anybody, um, anybody, anybody listening live, since we're doing this private match thing, the, uh, the game, the server name is seven, two PC. The password is also seven, two PC. Any caps in that? Uh, All no caps. Or, okay. the, the, the server, the server is caps. The password I think was lowercase. 
Yeah, sorry, sorry for uh, the podcast listeners. Um, I was stumbling fierce because we were trying to navigate that damn server drop. <laughs> But we're back. We're so good. It's if, you're li- radio, if, you're listening, if you're listening to us on the podcast services, you're probably used to this kind of thing by now. Yeah. I don't know. We don't stumble that much normally. No, nah, not normally. But we, we got it all set up. We're good now. Yeah. Wait. So um, how many people Max can play that aggro at once? Four. Max party size of four. Okay. It's decent. I and that, and then I think point. for the deep dives, you have to have one of each class. There's mm. currently four classes. Ooh. And you have to oh. be prestiged once in order to do them. So it's actually very key to coordinate with the people you p- plan to play with. Yeah, exactly. That's why when I first started playing, I leveled a bunch of characters up. That way I could just fill based Wherever. on who's playing what. Nice. Yeah, but that's also your style. You spend a lot of time in a game when you're hot in it and you grind the shit out of it. Yeah, man. <laughs> I burn myself out of games real quick. Hence your uh, RuneScape Iron Man run of last month. Yeah, that lasted a good three weeks. Ground RuneScape out my fire making and decided I was bored of it and didn't want to get into thieving yet. <laughs> to be fair, fire making is maybe one of the more boring <laughs> things you can level in RuneScape. Absolutely. Yeah, they've got this mini game called Winter Todd that's kind of cool. Um, really they high XP. Something. But again, I it's remember- still pretty repetitive i remember outside of um wasn't lumbridge uh north of it there would always be the lines of people just cutting trees and lighting fires so you just see the boom 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 yeah um real quick before i forget scott we were talking about deep rock galactic is the one we were talking about earlier man i didn't even know you had the game yeah yeah yeah. sounds like i'll need to hit him up to play some he's also got tarkov Yes. Speaking of Tarkov, how was once? the wipe event? I played maybe one or two raids of the wipe event. It was fine. They basically just changed all the scavs to raiders and Ooh. made everything in the everything from the traders was like unreasonably cheap, like one ruble, ten rubles kind of thing. Okay. So yeah, it was fun. That's pretty cool. Uh, the wipe happened. So the new update happened. Everybody lost all their progress. So you have to start over from scratch. Uh, pretty big changes to how the economy is going to be because you can't sell anything on like the global flea market player to player trading thing unless you actually found it inside of a raid and got out with it. So it's going to That's going to be really interesting. Yeah, it's going to be tough, but it's going to prevent all of the the trader shenanigans that were happening and people trading using bots and stuff to buy out items from the traders and inflate prices on the market and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's going to eliminate basically all of that. And then, sorry, that was kind of a good call. (laughs) That that, that was was a really good shot. Holy shit. Um, Right. You just um, fucking dunked. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I'm, that should yeah. that should hopefully positively affect the economy in the game, and I don't know. It's my gonna make things con- more interesting. My only concern is that you can't sell stuff you got off of players, though, right? Or they take that part back. Um, the exception is weapons. So any weapons okay. you get off a player, you can still sell in the flea market. But everything else, if it didn't spawn on that server then it's not going to be found in raid when you get it. Oh, okay, okay. That's not how I understood it initially. I like that. I initially so, understood it of if it spawned, someone loots it, you kill that person and loot it off them, you couldn't sell it. Oh. Um, no, I don't think that's how that works. Okay, so as long as it was found in that raid, it's sellable. As long as it was an item that spawned when that raid started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a better way to word it. Sweet. That is awesome. So I Ooh. think that uh, like anything this the AI scabs are carrying, I think is going to be found in raid, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not 100 percent on that one. But yeah, I, I've been missing some Tarkov. I've been missing some silky smooth 60 FPS Rocket League. But oh, I've also been missing some Tarkov. Yeah, I'm, I I'm... actually got back into Tarkov today. Yeah, we could play oh. some games with Acro. It was fun. What do you think? You you you're a little rusty. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty is an understatement. Oh, did you team kill? 
No. Not yet. I'm waiting okay, for it though. It's gonna happen. I mean Yeah. It's gonna be Rob and then I'll make him upset again and I'll feel bad. <laughs> no, you can kill kill me make it me this time. Right, yes, Adam. make it Adam. Oh. Adam has it fucking coming. <laughs> Shut up, nice. Eric. I've been team killed before too. <laughs> I've never team killed in that. How'd you kill yourself then, Adam? What? If you've been team killed. I've been team killed by Rob. I've been team killed by. I think I've been team killed by Irk once or twice. Not as many times as I've killed him, but. I but, have. I've absolutely team uh, damaged. I don't know if I've team killed yet, though. Like, I you fucked somebody up. But... You didn't kill me, but we was in a firefight. I turned the corner, and you fucking wrecked me with a shot. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, oh god! It was. It was just. I was sitting there. I was holding the angle, and then suddenly pasta salad. <laughs> Scary shit. I'm yep. pretty sure, uh, Dobby. I'm pretty sure Eric has killed me because I'm pretty sure I made the comment. Well, I've killed you like twice now, so I guess it's. All right. Not, well, I can't it's be happened, mad about it's that. only been once, but I don't remember it. I'm holding it to that. It happened. But no, I but no, remember the, uh... Tom. Tom's was hilarious because we just got done with this battle, mm. and then just bam. <laughs> Thought there was somebody else lurking. There was. It was Erk. Erk the Lurk? No, um... God, that was awful. Um, ah, but no, so the, the new can... Tarkov patch is good. A couple of the other things they changed is they changed all the loot pool stuff, so, like, you can find certain items in, in like, a duffel bag or something that you couldn't find before. It seems like they increased a variety of stuff you can find. Hmm. And um, then... Rob posted one where it was the, um, melee weapon you need to extract on, um woods red rebel yeah oh yeah the woods and reserve one yeah he showed one where they found that in the duffel bag that would be insane <laughs> i'm sure the drop rate is insanely low but yeah apparently they changed a lot of that kind of stuff and they changed the scav ai too so the the oh. scav ais will sometimes like actually rush you instead of oh. just like chilling waiting on you to peek them again and then occasionally, I think they'll actually throw grenades and stuff too, like non bodyguard scavs might spawn with Ooh. grenades and actually toss them at you. Huh. That's kind of cool. As if I need more ways that. to die. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, I think they're they're gradually making the game even more punishing. I love little it. Little by little. Which is I think the kind of that's the MO of the game, honestly. Oh yeah. I actually really enjoy that about it. Yeah, it wouldn't be too. fun if it wasn't like that. Yeah. To be honest, it wouldn't be Tarkov. You need those stakes. You need you need something to lose to get that heart rate going. Whenever you're yep. trying to be as quiet as you can with a squad of four all around you, and you're just hoping they don't just absolutely destroy you and take all of your stuff. So, what other games y'all fell has been doing? I have played a lot of games and a lot of new stuff. So uh, Epic had a massive sale, uh, so I picked up a bunch of stuff. Control was one of the things. Um, but I also picked up Anno 2205. I decided to buy some games and stream some games that I don't ever play, because last cast, I said, you know, I wouldn't be caught dead playing one of those goddamn survival strategy crafting survival whatever bullshit games, because I burnt out of those so fucking hard. So uh, <laughs> I bought a bunch of them. Nice. Um, <laughs> and I decided to stream them purely because I said I wouldn't. Um, so, you know, I figured that would be that'd be sort of interesting to see a person who self-proclaims to have completely burnt out of that genre play some of those games. Um, so I played Anno 2205, and it seems like City Skylines Light. Like, I haven't gotten very far into it, to be fair. Um, but it's, it's fine. It's a good game. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's honestly not not that much to say about it. Like, it's interesting. It's it's kind of fun, but uh, I'm not super into it. Like, if I never played it again, I think I'd be OK. I do need to give it a little bit more time just to uh, just to do it. But eh, it's all right. Uh, I also picked up The Long Dark on Xbox Game Pass uh, after I figured out I owned it on Steam which I didn't realize. <laughs> nice. um, 
so yeah, I, I played some of that. I died a lot. Um, it's pretty cool, like getting getting prepped on how December 2020 is going to go. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, we all know that we're going to be carving up deer with our bare hands and uh, dying cold and alone. So I'm ready. Let's do um, this. So I, I will plan on doing half of that. Okay. Which Just dying uh, cold, but not alone. <laughs> Uh, I so know, the Long um, Dark is good. It's a very, very good game. And it does the nice survival thing of no matter what you're doing, even if you think you're you're in a good spot, those meters are always ticking down. The game is always getting harder. Stuff is always getting harder to find. Um, yeah, it's it's nice. It's it's a really, really good game. I don't know if I if I'm gonna play it much, much more. Mm -hmm. Um I haven't seen nearly everything there is in this game. But a lot of the a lot of the difficulty comes from just understanding where you are in the world and in the map. And in a static map, that's a lot of the challenge is, OK, I need to figure out exactly where these places are, what my battle plan is. OK, after I exhaust resources in this area, where am I going? How am I getting there? What kind of things am I going to do to protect myself from from like the fucking wolves when stuff gets thin enough that they start attacking you for your food? How are you going to do that? How are you going to, you know, defend yourself and uh, try not to exhaust all of your resources in the pursuit of that effort? Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, if you are looking for one of those survival games, I, I will say Long Dark, especially if you have Game Pass, probably worth your time to just download it and install it. It's good. I like it. If you're looking for a streamer that plays it a lot, um a uh, community member and our friend Dave uh, Epoch plays. Mm -hmm. I think he plays he plays that game a good bit on stream. He does, and he does a lot of just general survival crafting games on stream quite often. Yeah. So if you're looking for stuff like that, or even just like recommendations of, hey, I'm new to this genre, or you know, I bounced off of it and I I don't know what kind of games are good. Dave is your man. He will tell you exactly what games. Because uh, if there's a crafting or survival game out there, he's played it. Yeah, I, Probably, I mean, I'm yeah. sure there's some that he hasn't, but in general, he plays a fuck ton of those things. Yeah. He plays some that I've never seen. Right. Um, let's see. I also played Bird Tinder. Uh, Bird Tinder sucked. <laughs> it was Tinder for birds. Um, oh, that's a thing. So I played, uh, it's actually a pretty old game, uh, Hatful Boyfriend, which is uh, a, a bog standard dating simulator, but all of your potential boyfriends are pigeons. <laughs> you apparently go to a high school for pigeons, and there is an option that gives you in the beginning of the game, hey, do you want to see what these people look like as like cute anime boys, or do you want to just keep them as pigeons? So of course... I checked the just keep miss fucking pigeons option because <laughs> that's really what I'm into. Uh, so I played bird tinder and whereas the KFC Kentucky fried, good, delicious dating simulator is, um, uh, is hilarious and fantastic. This is not, unfortunately the KFC dating simulator, or actually fortunately the KFC dating simulator took kind of the tropes of the genre and stuff that people hated and made fun of it in like, circumvented your expectations around what a dating simulator is or should be. And it was just all around a good time. This doesn't do any of that. The only thing, the only redeeming quality is quite literally um, that that goal was fucking stupid. That was... <laughs> okay, I don't know that. much about, about the that. game. I don't know much about the game, but I thought I heard somewhere where that it like at some point completely turns on its head and gets really not that you like it gets see, I, like really violent or something or dark no, or... You're, you're thinking of uh doki doki literature club oh. which i'm sure i saw josh in the chat josh knows all about that and i have yet to play it but he told me i should uh but yeah that's the game that really goes Maybe that's what i'm thinking of he probably field. talked he probably talked about that on an old podcast or something yeah yeah uh, okay. but had a full boyfriend so far and i didn't put that much time into it because honestly the game just sucked at least to me <laughs> If you love dating sims, you'll probably love this. I couldn't get into it. It was fucking bad. Uh, it is just dating sim tropes, but the only redeeming factor is, hey, instead of anime boys, they're they're pigeons. They're, that's it. That's that's, that's the whole the, the whole hook. Congratulations, <laughs> they're pigeons. 
That sounds bad. Yeah, I, Chewy, I didn't like it. Chewie says that game ruined his friendships in middle school because <laughs> one of the guys in his friend group took it way too seriously. <laughs> it happens. Um, let's see, what else did I play? Beat Saber, been rocking that. Um, sorry, I'm responding to you, Eric. Yee, I, I am seeing your, your typing, by the way. Um, it's live radio. Um, so yeah, playing Beat Saber. Still, uh, still making records, playing the game, getting getting my uh, Streamlabs overlays tuned up for that, uh, and it looks pretty good now. I gotta say, it's not perfect, but uh, yeah, we're we're getting it. I'm digging uh, your overlay, and I'm also digging your uh, perfect run. I was gonna say, oh, yeah, yeah, perfect run of uh, what's the what's the song? Dire Dire Docks. Dire Dire yep. Docks. Uh, so yeah, did a uh, didn't. A no miss run hit every single note, which was good. That's really nice for uh, a song with a thousand notes in it. Um, but I still landed at like the the four hundred uh, level. Um, so I've got I've got a ways to improve. I think I landed at four hundred three is what I clipped. Uh, so I've still got a very long way to. Uh... Um, let's see here. What else? Do we... Pavlov. There's a new update, new server browser, which sounds great. It's fantastic, super organized. The issue uh, is that um, the server browser is broken, like totally broken. All the sorting and filtering. So I wanted to play gun game, selected, okay, hide, empty, and full. Works great, perfect, all right, select gun game. All the games disappear. But if I go to the list and I scroll down manually without filtering, there's like seven gun game servers in there. So I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they totally broke that, uh, which, which sucks. Um, other than that, the, the new update is cool. It adds like a bunch of custom server stuff. So now, just like in old school Counter-Strike days, you have um, people building their own custom game modes, their own custom servers, and really running persistent stuff for Tarkov, or not Tarkov, for Pavlov which is fantastic. The usual game is limited to 5v5. There was like a 16 versus 16 server. So Ooh. it really reminded me of like old school CS where you just played with massive groups of people and it was a giant clusterfuck. So that's always fun. Um, yeah, it's good. Um, there was a, uh, somebody made a battlefield mod. So it was a literal, literal World War II battlefield mod where you as the allies have to push through Normandy and like take over a base after you like march through and take over certain control points and bomb certain locations. And it was fantastic. It was like nice. a 25 V 25 server or something nuts like oh, that. That'd um, be a lot of fun. Yeah. It was really fucking cool. Uh, so I have to, I have to still give my recommendation to Pavlov. They're doing good stuff there. Um, yeah. Uh, I've got, I've got two more games to talk about, but I don't want to like, talk over the entire goddamn show <laughs> well i don't have anything else outside of i did some sudoku because i've become hooked on sudoku. oh no i watched a dude oh. i'm not surprised sudoku that was just two numbers given to him and then these weird rule sets like knight's rule queen's rule and stuff what? like that and the so knight's rule would be like within a knight's move of a number that number can't be it either and same with like queen's room or queen's move and king's move so okay. like he was able to take uh, it was king's move knight's move and um that was it and from that he was able to take just two numbers on the board and solve the entire thing like he thought he was getting trolled when he started so i huh. watched him do the entire thing and this just got me into a sudoku kick I will say, out, of, why, out but... of all of our friend group, if anybody was going to get into Sudoku, I would have <laughs> absolutely picked you. Yeah. Like, not even, nobody would even be close. I mean, I've always kind of liked Sudoku, but watching him is like, there's a lot of like, the guy was a professional cryptographer. So he was really good at uh, recognizing patterns. And like in that one, as soon as he was about to solve it, he's like, this is going to be symmetric. So he pointed out, like, on the board, any way you sliced it, it was symmetric. Hmm. It was really oh, cool. fucking cool. Nice. But yeah, the, I, I am that guy who's starting to get into it. I need to get back into mobile chess. 
and started honing my chess skills back up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, same. If you want to oh, feel hey, good oh. about your chess gameplay, you can play against me. Uh, Irk is probably the, the best chess player in our group, I would say. Uh, he, he was, like, fucking wrecking my shit every time, and I thought I was decent. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm by no means good. I used to be pretty good, and now I'm dog shit. By actual good standards. <laughs> like, I was decent by actual good standards, and now I'm just dog shit. Dobby calls out in the chat, <laughs> wrong, 3 0 him last time we played, now he's scared. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, Eric's getting shade again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I played The Tetris Effect, which is another game I bought on the Epic Store, which has always been way too goddamn expensive for what it is, but because it was on sale, I decided, "All right, here we go." Um it is literally Tetris, except you've got like this heavy base EDM you can play inside of VR and you can set up additional controllers and like put them around yourself um and it would like you can set the beats to follow like lyrics or the songs or the actions you're taking on like in the game of tetris so you've got like different vibrations on different controllers for different parts of the game like the whole thing is just designed to be an immersive experience um it is like a weird fucked up mix of res and Beat Saber in VR and Tetris, and I played it, and I was, admit it, I was a little drunk. Um, <laughs> it was fucking great. Like, I set it to easy mode because I am I am shit at Tetris. I've always been shit at Tetris. I'm mm. sure 70-year-old Gladys would be fucking great at this. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I would not recommend going after this for 60 bucks. But if you want Tetris, if you want like kind of a chill out and vibe to this sort of environment, it's great. It's great. I probably went through the whole campaign in an hour and a half. Um, okay. But there's like a bunch of different modes. There's some multiplayer stuff. Uh, you can do a whole lot with this game. Um, yeah, it was good. What's nice is that every single move you make, so every time you move a piece or rotate a piece, it triggers like a certain sound effect or lyric within the song. Oh. Um, so, like, you'll be moving stuff, cool. and eventually, on beats, you'll just start automatically moving and rotating stuff to the beat of the song, which works really well, because the speed is tied to the speeds of the song. So okay. it gets you into this cool, like, flow state. I can't call it a rhythm game, because it's still just fucking Tetris, mm. but it has that kind of, like, vibe-out feeling. How, how is the um, soundtrack? Because I saw, I saw a little article okay. today that... Uh, it was added to spotify the soundtrack was yeah it's okay it's not like half the songs are bangers they're fucking great half uh -huh. of them totally forgettable um okay. so it's not it's not wonderful uh but you know it's fine i think i paid 20 bucks for it when it was on sale uh which is perfect i think that's that's a great price point for it um i do really like the vr and the vr options um because what's nice is you can tell it okay I want the effects to be this bright or this immersive or this distracting. So you can okay. exactly control how far you want to vibe out when you're drunk as shit playing goddamn Tetris in your living room wearing a <laughs> VR headset. I heard the VR end of it was fucking excellent. It is. It is really fucking great. Um, and it does support every controller under the sun. So I literally just rolled this chair into my living room, put on my headset and played it with an Xbox controller. And it, it worked great. It was perfect. So I, I, I really wanted that, but I know for a long time there was no VR support. Oh, well, I shouldn't say VR support. It wasn't on PC initially, but mm -hmm. there was worries about the VR support and stuff. But yeah, I, I really think I'm going to pull the trigger on this now that it's PC with VR. Yeah, like it's especially if you just want a game to vibe out to. Perfect. It, it feels a lot like Res in that regard. Uh, which, by the way, Irk, if you don't have res, you should probably get res because it's great even on 2D screen. And it's usually pretty cheap depending on when you buy it. Yeah, I don't have it. I need to at some point. I know uh, I was pissing you guys off and I was referring to Resident Evil 7 as res. <laughs> um, now, I, I will say uh, res is, in, and I mentioned this on the last cast, it, it is the only game I know that the original PS2 release came with a little... 
quite literally just a rumble pack that plugged into a controller port called the Trance Vibrator. <laughs> now, we're not going to go into details on this PG-13 podcast, but <laughs> it is the only game I know of to come out with a Trance Vibrator. And the new version of Res does support it still. <laughs> that nice. is... Yep. <laughs> Josh so, uh, in the chat says washable sleeve. <laughs> uh, yeah, it actually did have a washable <laughs> sleeve too. Oh man, that that's yeah, so, so Josh knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, Res, that the game that came with a vibrator. Yes, it's that one. That's unbelievable. <laughs> so uh yeah, Res was fucking great and still is. And by the way, you don't have to have a trans vibrator right now. If you have other controllers with rumble functionality, it supports them out of the box. And works the exact same way. So there you go. Yeah. Right. So let's uh, get that past be, that. We're, we're not going to stream the Trans Vibrator stream on Twitch, uh, but there are other places you we can, can join stream our that. OnlyFans. <laughs> the official 72 PC OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. We will show you the Tom content. We'll show you yes. the inside of our controllers. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I see what you did there. Um, I have one more game I played that I've been keeping a secret because it is not my type of game, and I've only played the first 40 minutes. So oh, it's a fun be... game? Yeah, the fun game. <laughs> um, I played Gravelly Voice, American Soldier Man, Badass, the game. That doesn't narrow it down um, very much. Yeah. Uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Oh. Uh, oh. So I, I got it for free. Um, it's it came like as a code in a package for a microphone that I just recently bought. Uh, so I wasn't like, I've been literally holding this for a month and I'm like, all right, fine. I'll play something new today. I'll talk about it on the show. I don't really want to. And I looked at the Metacritic scores. I'm like, Oh God, this is going to be a fucking trash fire. And guys, I'm happy to say a fucking trash fire. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I've never played a, I've never played a ghost recon game. I love Ghost Recon. Ghost Recon was fucking baller back in the day. Like, you had big, like, expansive fucking worlds, and you had to really set up people in certain positions. It was super tactical. It's like Rainbow Six, but instead of, like, taking a house, you're taking, like, a village. And that's the best way I can explain it. Uh, it, Like, back in the day, it was excellent. It has a great storied history. Um, But it was... uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint is they took Ghost Recon and they tried to make it Destiny, and it sucks as much as you can imagine. So it's quite literally the bog standard, here's the Ubisoft template, um, just standard open world, whether it's Assassin's Creed or Far Cry, it doesn't matter, it's the same goddamn game. <laughs> and let's put Ghost Recon in it, uh, but we'll, we won't put any of the like fun tactical stuff in there, it's just a loot shooter. So you run around, you kill NPCs, you can group up with four other buddies, they have an immersion mode, which takes away half the UI. Um, cool. Uh, but otherwise, the game is completely forgettable. Again, I played the first 40 minutes. I probably won't play anything else. Um, it just seems really dull. Like, you you are the only survivor of this elite squad until you get to the player hub area where there's like 40 of you. Um but, but you're all the only survivors of your You're the only club. manly American, manly man, beard American cigar. <laughs> and that's that's the game. It's literally just it's just fapping over military porn. That's that's it. It's just military porn. I and heard the last one wasn't awful. It's just that it uh, was kind of easy with the drone. Yeah, this game, like it's got some interesting ideas. But they're all executed in, like, the most generic ways humanly possible. Uh, and it just, it's not good. It's not good. Uh, yeah, that's, that's all I got there. I was uh, never a Ghost Metacritic, Recon fan. Metacritic is like a 66 or something. With, with everyone saying, yeah, the worst part about this game is that it's not, like, bad. It's just so generic and bland, it hurts. Hmm. The only Ghost Recon game I played is the one that had the crossover mission with Mag. Not Mag. Um, was it Mag? The jet game? Tom Clancy jet game? Oh, yeah. What on the, the fuck was that called? Era? Yeah, which the it, it had game? all the... Um, oh. Fuck, it had all the voice controls. That didn't work very well. 
No, no, no. Oh. You're thinking um, um the RTS. That's the RTS with the voice controls. Okay. I enjoyed that. There was a just a jet hawk. Thank you, Dobby. Hawk. hawk. There we go. It, that had a mission where you had to go in and save some ground troops. And Ghost Recon had that same mission where you had to call in air support to save your ass. Which was kind of cool that they did a crossover on the games released at the same time like that. Mm. But I think that was the only Ghost Recon I had actually played. I played the like the original in Ghost Recon 2. I played a lot of way back in the day. Um, and they were fucking baller. They were great. Um, especially if like you thought Rainbow Six was a little too claustrophobic, but you wanted that style of game in like a larger world. That's what Ghost Recon was. It's literally Rainbow Six, but bigger scale, uh, which was nice because in, in Rainbow Six, you very rarely had the chance to like use sniper rifles. It was all very close quarters. In Ghost Recon, you can say, okay, we're going to put a spotter and a sniper up on this hill here, cover these angles. We're going to send these guys in as a strike team around the side. Um, and it allowed you to do like very large scale tactics in a big world, which was really cool. Um, this this looks just it, nothing like it's it. generic, generic war, gruff, manly man, beards and scars, destiny. So if you want beards and scars, destiny, uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint might be for you. All righty then. Yeah, yeah I'm that's I it. I'm good. I'm good on that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's kind of what I feel. If I, if I really wanted that, I'd just play a modern Call of Duty game or something. Mm. Yeah, I... Clancy doesn't have a... Shoot, I mean, outside, I like Rainbow Six. Don't be wrong, it's a good multiplayer. But, like, I loved Rainbow Six. Like, Rainbow Six OG, Rainbow Six 3, Ooh. Rainbow Six Vegas. Vegas was great. I love Vegas. But, like, they don't have anything in that vein anymore where they make a good single player campaign. It's nice and it's more tactical, it's smaller scale. It's not this huge war that's going on. I, I should mention that the, the main story thread, the like, I can't even call it single player because you can, it's an MMO. Um, but the main thread is all hung together by uh, what's his name from The Walking Dead, also the Punisher, that guy. I forget his fucking name. He was the Punisher in the Netflix series. He was in The Walking Dead. He was the guy that... Spoilers. Oh. Um, that guy? Yeah, that guy. Just, and he's, he's doing his best generic, gruff, manly army guy thing. And it's fine. Like, he, he acts it well. But that's literally the only redeeming factor to that game. When the acting is the only... I shouldn't say that. There's some games that are really good because of the acting, but... That shouldn't be the main sell of your game. Yeah. Nah. Uh, uh, yeah, that's all I got. So, um, anyone have anything else they want to talk to? Talk about? Talk at? Game-wise? Anything mm. we might have missed over that, um, oh shit, I wanted to hit? Mm. I played like Bird Tinder an, sucks. an hour of Terraria, but I didn't get to any oh. of the new content or anything. Oh, that sucks. I played like Man. I was playing by myself because I think everybody else was playing other games and stuff, and I I was playing a little bit and I remembered how like vulnerable you are at the beginning of that game. Oh God, yes. And <laughs> I was just like, when you're by yourself. It's I don't know. I think that game needs you need to play with friends to have fun. I don't know. It seems like too mm. much. It seems like too much work to play a single player. So yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I played it for like an I hour. I wouldn't enjoy it as much single player. But I also, on those type of games, only really play with people. So mm -hmm. I feel that way about Minecraft. Like I used to love it single player, but it's so much better. With the only one I played single player anywhere near that vein is um, son of a bitch. I just blanked. Uh, Factorio. Yeah. I played a lot of Factorio alone. That's a hard one to really pull off multiplayer because you really have to be in sync. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Ah, well, if that's the case. Um, we go on to some moo moos, moos. moos. We got moos. cows up in this joint. <laughs> um, Sonic movie getting a sequel? Really? Did, it, did any of you guys watch it? The first one? No. No. 
I have it made enough money that a sequel has been greenlit and will uh, will be coming out. Yeah, well, um, I hmm. intended on seeing it at some point, but yeah, it never happened. Not paying twenty dollars to buy it, so I'll wait. Yeah. Still, the the uh, best thing I heard about the Sonic movie is that if you've ever seen a uh, fuzzy mascot animal family movie, uh, it is literally that, but with Sonic instead of a generic yeah. like yeah. whatever. We have Josh saying uh, it wasn't horrible, and we have Dobby saying he enjoyed it. So I mean, overall, it doesn't seem like bad. Sure. I mean, if if it's not like a total cringe fest, that it is honestly the best thing Sega has done with Sonic ever, <laughs> um, or since the Genesis, I would say. I loved waking up on Saturdays before going to soccer and watching Sonic in the morning. That was Hell great. yeah! The Sat AM one was fucking baller. Oh yeah, I don't know what Sat AM is, but there were more. yeah there were there were two two versions of the Sonic cartoon. One was absolutely awful kids showed dregs and the other was actually based more on the archie comics version of sonic the hedgehog um but it had like a full story and characters and a sweeping narrative and like some yeah, drama that's what I and, yeah it was fucking great yeah yeah because you can't rely on the sonic game to give you narrative because <laughs> dudes turning animals into robots for a master plan yeah <laughs> that's it but that's they it. took that that's and it. somehow in the comic book in the Sad AM TV show, like expanded it into the, like this full fucking world that then the games took stuff from that universe and like retroactively made them canon, which was pretty cool. Unfortunately, I am an expert on Sonic lore because I was that kid. That game had no lore. The fact that there is lore is a travesty. See, see, you I obviously was, was didn't play guy. Sonic Adventure. True. Get the fuck out of here. I played Sonic 3D Blast. Froggy? Oh, did you see that? Uh, this isn't our news thing, but did you see they're changing? They're making Sonic 3D in 2D. What? Huh? Yeah. Like Sonic 3D Blast? Yeah, in 2D. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Is it going to be like Fez? Uh... I don't, is that the only is that the only 3d this game that's labeled sonic 3d yeah is there, no, is sonic, there another sonic 3d blast i think it's the only one with actual sonic 3d in the title okay, yeah yeah that's the one that i don't know huh. i just i remember i vaguely saw the the news thing today i didn't I, really I read the whole article that. that's bizarre i think i like it but bizarre because <laughs> i actually unlike most people i enjoyed that game quite a lot Sonic 3 Blast? It. Yeah. I put a whole shit ton of time into it. Looking back, it was not a good game, but I didn't hate it when I was a kid. It was fucking hard. Yeah. But then uh, again, Sonic games generally were. Yeah. Because that was following up. That was, was that before 3? Was, yeah, it was right after 3. Uh, No, it was right after Knuckles. Was it? I thought it was, yeah. okay. So it was before 3. Because Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles were actually originally the same game, but Sega didn't want to pay for the super beefy cart. Um, so they decided to put it in a separate, they literally split the game in half, made one half Sonic 3 and the other half Sonic and Knuckles, and then added that lock on technology. So it would both be cheaper and force people to buy two different games. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. Well, but the thing is that that made a really cool thing because, uh, put Sonic 2 in Sonic and Knuckles and be able to play as Knuckles in Sonic 2. That yeah. was actually really fucking cool. Yeah. I love that lock-on technology stuff. That was really cool. Also, Knuckles I've... is the coolest character. He's the edge. Oh, I shouldn't say edgy. That's clearly <laughs> Shadow. Yeah. Uh, he was <laughs> the edge. <laughs> yeah. The fact that they had a hedgehog named Shadow and he was like, ah, I won't get into it. Yeah, that was cringe. It's <laughs> so cute. <laughs> The edge so, is so cute. God damn it. Actually, okay, super, actually okay, right, right. Real, super, real super Sonic is the coolest character. I'm sorry. Okay, yes. But not Hyper Knuckles? Come on, it's, man. It's literally Super Saiyan Sonic. All the way down uh, to the green, okay. the green eyes color changing. Real talk. What would you rather have? If you had to live with one cringe, would you rather live with Shadow the Hedgehog or Gruff Manly Army? Yeah. Army uh, Manly, yeah. 
Yeah. It'd be weird living with a hedgehog like that. Yeah. I, Same I, I, I... Then again, I never played the game that had Shadow in it, so. It, yeah, I, I did for like. There an was hour. one that I played, it was on the 360 with Shadow, and it was almost like a. I don't want to call it an auto runner, but it was very much of that vein where you was on a track, he was running quick, and you're like left or right was really your options. Mm -hmm. Sounds riveting. It, it was, especially for, you know, <laughs> being in the 360 era where you definitely can do shit. Let's just make an auto runner because Believe those are not, awesome. a lot of issues with Sonic in the modern era has been the move to 3D. He never actually made it well. And mm -hmm. it's because his games, dare I say, were technologically demanding. So you had to be able to move the player at a super fast pace, but render enough of the level of that stuff didn't sneak up on him. So already mm -hmm. there's an issue there, right? That you have to contain an entire level in RAM, which was hard for consoles at um, or hide it behind load points that A, still hide some of the level, but B, make it so it doesn't look like a choke point and doesn't surprise your players. Like, there's actual technological issues trying to put Sonic in 3D that people don't realize. It's not, an, it's not a trivial problem, or at least it wasn't a trivial problem. You could do it today with SSDs and modern consoles, but mm -hmm. like doing that shit on the Dreamcast, that was basically impossible, which is why Sonic Adventure ended up the way it did. Uh, so Dobby calls out that in his mind, he actually, I think most of us would say you, you lump Sonic with Mario, but he's saying in his brain, it went like Sonic and Mega Man were kind of lumped in together. That's kind of weird to me because I never, never conflated those two in the same space. Mega Man was always more, more, you know, actiony and, and planned. Like it was, it was a, you know, white knuckle NES action shooter platformer thing, but I never put them together. I, but his logic, I get. It's yeah. that they were hard, and there's way too fucking many of them. So, I, I mean, on that, I disagree <laughs> with that. Cannot disagree with that. I think there is more entries in Mega Man than any other franchise. Uh, no, I'm sure that there's more on something else. Man, I don't know. Mega Man there's is a lot of Mega Man's. Like like I, There's a lot of Mega podcast, Man's. I want to look that up because I think that might be the most interest for any like main published game. Like, sure, uh, there might be some indie thing where some guy like grinded out twenty episodes or twenty copies of this game that really sucks. But like an actual like major publisher title, Mega Man has like probably what close to. I close almost to, like, want to say FIFA, FIFA or Madden. Okay, I don't count those though. Those might be exceptions. I don't think anyone really consider. I mean, you do, but they're not different games. Even the people who buy them year to year buy them because of a new function, not because they feel it's going to be a gigantically different game. Actually, yeah. With uh, what Dobby put in the chat, maybe Mega Man has more games than FIFA. What is he has a number at twenty nine? Yeah, there's twenty nine plus. Um, that list, I don't think it counts for the Mega Man Battle Network series. Which yeah, that, is that would another, pass any... What, eight? Because <laughs> of the versions? Mm. In terms uh, of Mega Man titles, there's 133 Mega Man titles. The oh my fuck? God. Yeah, what? 130. That, that probably breaks down the consoles and stuff, too, because like, there yeah. were re-releases oh. and stuff. Yeah. Still, though. That's a few. Even, even if it's a 29... I mean, you think the oldest EA game was probably like NHL 94 was the first year one or something like that. So that would have, what, 26 entries? Yeah. So, I mean, that's nutty. I, I think we stumbled onto probably the franchise that that legitimately has the most. Just in Thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub, my dude. We appreciate it. But anyway... Enough of talking about Mega Man when we was talking about Sonic. Um, <laughs> Half-Life did shit, Tom. That's you. Yeah. Get him. All right. So yeah. um, apparently on quarantine, some of the effects artists at Valve have been, been working on something a little nice. We're talking about liquid physics. Ooh, something that all games suck at. Yeah. Um, so 
in Half-Life Alex, the bottles would actually be opaque. You couldn't see anything, but you could hold it up to your ear and slosh it around and hear stuff, which is nice. Um, they actually just pushed an update to vastly improve the visual quality of all liquid containers where you can actually see stuff sloshing around inside the bottles in real time following gravity. And if you shake it too much, it actually puts like a little foam layer on it, which is it really looks, fucking cool. It looks really good. I saw a, a little bit of footage of it. Huh. It actually yeah, it looks, looks really nice. The real question is, though, can you get a little whirlpool going? That I don't oh. know because I haven't tried that. Imagine you're could, talking real water physics. Yeah. We could do the Half-Life Alex physics stream. Um, <laughs> yeah, it looks it looks really nice. Um, and it's not not to like ruin the magic, but it's not actually physics. It's not using you know physicality or fluid dynamic simulations to do any of this. It's quite literally just a graphical shader applied to the bottle that mm-hmm. does this work. Still looks fucking great, but don't expect like. I'm going to break open the bottle at this angle and then like slowly pour this amount of liquid out. And nah, it doesn't work like that. When you break the bottle, it literally just splishes and adds a decal to wherever it got wet. Um, I mean, it's still there, fucking impressive. Just yeah. don't, don't expect anything crazy. I mean, actually physically modeling liquids in every single bottle filled with liquid in any game would just be ridiculously intensive CPU wise and inefficient. Wouldn't modeling make any sense. fluids in fucking movies that have giant CGI budgets takes months of rendering time. I mean, of course, you spread it out along a cluster, but it takes a very long time to render that shit. Mm-hmm. It's not not easy. Hmm. Yeah, water is always a bitch. Yeah. That's why Dark Alliance, when they did the water in that, I was always dumbfounded. Like, that is some of the best-looking water. When Acro and I were playing that, that shit still looked pretty good. And that was a PS2 game. <laughs> uh, Modern-day Sea of Thieves has really nice-looking water. Yeah, it does. Yes. I want... I feel I should want to play that game more than I'm playing it. <laughs> yeah, or I played it. Same. And I feel like it should be so good. But, eh. It's one of those things where no one else is playing it, so I have no interest. Because you have to play with people. Yeah. You have to play with your mateys. Arr. 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 Damn it, I just took down the Arr. news. But there was another Half-Life thing, Tom. What was it? Yeah, so, um, but if you... Is it okay legally to pirate Sea of Thieves? <laughs> Isn't it in the na- or the message <laughs> of the game? Yeah, that's that's kind of what I thought. Like... If you're if you're like RPing inside of Sea of Thieves, shouldn't you pirate the game? That'd be one uh, hell of a argument. Yeah. You got like a third strike on your ISP for pirating it. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I only downloaded Pirates of the Caribbean and Sea of Thieves and Sid Meier's Pirate. <laughs> Come on. Come on, guys. You gotta give me that. I mean that that would be pretty fucking stellar. <laughs> Um, Yeah, so the other Half-Life thing is that uh, Half-Life Alex added, this is old news, came out earlier this month, uh, but I just saw it, added nearly 1 million VR users to Steam. So 1 million people got access to the game through a a bundle of, you know, a supported headset. Pretty fucking nutty. One game. I don't know. 1 million VR headsets. So they sold a million Vives? Like, how are they attributing it to that game? Uh, so when you buy an index, you get it added without having to buy the game because oh, yeah. it comes with the index. Yeah, so so a million people got the game added that way. So a million people bought indexes is really what happened. Yeah. Yeah, but and you guarantee everybody that bought an index played that game. You know yes, everybody. But you can also guarantee everyone who bought the OG Valve also played the labs. Right. So, yeah, a bun- bunch of bunch of headsets out there. Now. That's pretty neat. Uh, speaking yeah. of, I got, uh, if you guys remember, mm, a few weeks ago, uh, my headset cable was giving me static and audio pops and weird shit in my headset. Um, I, I haven't heard anything in literally five weeks. I just checked this morning. So I'm like, hey, uh, did Valve let me know they were shipping this? And I guess they <laughs> forgot to. Um, But they said, hey, we're going to get you one as soon as possible and just radio silence for five weeks, whatever. 
I jerry rigged my cable enough that it actually kind of kind of worked mostly. Uh, as long as I didn't turn around too many times, it worked. Um, so I, I wasn't hurting for it. Uh, but I got the cable in. The repairability of the index is a goddamn dream come true. <laughs> Holy shit. No screwdrivers, no nothing. It Ooh. literally, like, the faceplate is this, like, magnetic thing. So I just click, put it off, pulled it off, put it on the floor, and nice. it was great. The cable, literally, one end goes to the computer, so I just unplug that side. It's got a breakaway connector. Unplug that. The headset is just mini display port. That's it. You just pull it out. It fits in a little snug, but you just pull it out, plug in the other one. That's it. Do some, like, slight routing along the headset for the the cable to, you know, be behind you instead of off to your side. And that's it. That's all it took. It that's was nice. It was so fucking great because it was the most trivial fix in the entire goddamn world. There's no like weird bullshit hidden technology or hidden pins or weird screwdrivers. I it didn't take any tooling whatsoever. And I literally laid out like all of my computer building tools in front of me and set the headset on my desk to do this work. I didn't need a goddamn thing. <laughs> more oh, literally just finger tightening stuff it's more awesome. hardware needs to use magnetic locks oh it was yes, so great i agree it was so great and uh in case you haven't uh haven't experienced this the face plates being magnetic is actually a core feature of the index um because what they do is uh you can buy just the face plate for like 30 bucks 40 bucks um and uh if you're having a Beat Saber party and somebody is like drowning in sweat, you just take one off and put the other one on and you're, you're good. You now have a, a dry headset, which is pretty That's neat. Sweet. Need to get you a backup headset. I was actually thinking when all this lockdown shit ends, I'm probably going to buy a couple face plates just, nice. just to have it. Yeah, all right. What else we got? Oh, hey. We was talking about City Skylines last week. Yeah. Guess what's so on, put down it in the Humble Store this week? City Skylines. It's a dollar on the Humble Store. If you don't have it, pick it up. It is a it is fucking SimCity at its best. Yeah. If you even remotely think you might like that genre even a little bit, it's a dollar. Try it out. You have spent more dollars on worse things. I mean, Maybe. if you spent any money to watch this podcast, you have spent more money <laughs> on worse things. Agreed. If you have ever subscribed to this Twitch channel, you have spent more money on worse things. So honestly, pick it up. It, it's pretty stellar. And one more uh, bit of news. Um, well, actually, I guess two. Uh, we played in the 2v2, and it was against Vision, 1v1. I believe. What? No, I was talking earlier in the week. Oh, oh, oh. Um, we got knocked out. It was, um, it hurt, but it happened. Uh, we went down 3-0. It was Lion and Jacob. Uh, they came back pretty good, got two more wins under their belt, but then eventually in game six, we got dropped. Mm. But just happened. But Lion today. Oof. He's Lion. Lion Blase. Lion Blase. Easy wins. And uh, damn it, I just lost it because I wasn't there today because I was busy. Um, he was playing J Russ. J Russ. He beat J Russ. Formerly known as Chicken. So yeah, Lion took it four two. It was a great series. It was a good came series. Out strong, but Lion is the goat. I will say L J is J Russ is really ones. good at air dribbling. He pulled off some really nice plays. Yeah, so um, Lion is currently the last standing of our entries into the Fusion Tournament. So um, let's get behind our horse here and let's make sure that he feels the support. Yeah. Because he's been kicking ass and hopefully he continues to kick some ass. Yep. So that puts him so, in the, the finals of the 1v1 bracket against First Killer. So that I, should be, I a, think that should be a crazy that. match. Yeah. Really looking so forward to that one. Yeah, this is going to be fun. A really fun fucking match. That's going to be ridiculous. But um, with that, do we have any other tidbits or anything? I think uh, that's it. 
Hmm. Oh. Other than Acro scoring on us. Thanks, Acro. <laughs> no problem, Nade. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. you. Just remember that no matter what you're expecting in your life, realize that 72 Pin Connector will be here for you with suddenly pasta salad. Ah, oh, there it is. Ah. Not the salad. <laughs> Still an awful name. Suddenly it's, it's a fine name. It's a beautiful name. So, since that's about all we have for you, it's about time for the social media rundown. Um, if you would like to subscribe to our Twitch channel, if you're listening on, on audio, we do twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. We do the podcast every Saturday at 9 p.m. EST, and we also do other streams, random streams of different games. Lots of VR from Tom, lots of just random stuff. Um, if you're already watching on Twitch right now, we also have a YouTube channel. We post a bunch of stuff on the YouTube channel, podcasts, we do community montages, uh, maybe some random stuff later, who knows. And, and some clips of the, we do some smaller bite-sized clips of the uh, podcast. Yeah. So in case you only want to see the good stuff, it's on YouTube. <laughs> That's I wouldn't say the good it. stuff, just <laughs> some of the stuff. If you're only interested in about 10% of the podcast, um, youtube.com slash 72 pin connector. Uh, you can tweet at us on Twitter. We do like plays of the day stuff. Every day we'll post a clip of our community making a cool play in any game, not just Rocket League. Um, but you can check all that out on our Twitter at 72PC underscore official. And we have a website, 72PinConnector.com. It has all the stuff on it, all the links. Uh, what am I missing? And I, I want to get something. in here real quick. Yeah. On plays of the day. Uh, if your game has implemented new things, make sure if you post a clip in pl plays of the day from GIF your game, hit that save button in the GIF your game application. Make sure they don't delete your GIF. We are getting a lot of deleted GIFs because GIF your game switched their format. So make sure to save that shit. That's right. Yeah. Was it like seven days? So only save clips now for seven days unless you save it or share it or favorite it or whatever. Yeah. You have so. to do something inside of their actual uh, Windows app to get them to not delete it. Which makes sense, Which I guess, I get, because servers. That's a, <laughs> yeah. That's a I lot of stuff to just that. store. For over a year, they were storing everyone's replays. You can go in the app and get the replays. Yeah, exactly. Cool. That's insane. Plus, they were storing rendered clips. Yeah. At 1080p. They recently dropped it to 720, I noticed, but. Yeah, fair enough, though. Uh, yeah, so but, I think that's all the social media links. If Unless I'm forgetting something. Did I forget one? Yeah, that's it. No, that, that's uh, all. Nice. If you'd like our OnlyFans, reach out to me personally. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> we'll get you that, no problem. Acro, thanks for joining us. It was nice to have you on the cast. Yeah. Hey, man, thanks yeah. for having me. Do you have anything, you, anything you'd like to plug? Uh, at LionBlaze246 on Twitter. That's a hell of a good our goaded 1v1s player. Yeah, nice. Indeed. All right. Uh, other than that, nothing. Nice. Well, I think that's all we have for you this week. So until next week, game on. Game on. See you, Bye.